Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas Survival Mode, and indeed the Jay Sawyer mod. Last time, well, I think we kind of did everything we need to do with Powder Gangers. So that's one gang of raiders taken care of. But today we've got another little group of raiders. Those we've decided to hold up in the Bison Steve. So let's go and clear them out and help out Prim, shall we? But first, the little mod showcase. A very small mod this week, actually. Uh, one that kind of came up quite a lot. Someone was recommending the improved camera to me. And you may be thinking, well, it doesn't seem to be improved much. No, that's because the improved camera doesn't actually... Well, I think it's an odd named thing, to be honest. Uh, the improved camera, as far as I can tell, does only one thing, which is now, if I'm in first person, I look down... I can actually see myself. And one thing I'll actually say, which is, like, um, in games where you look down and you see your own body, the leg animations are very, very odd and it doesn't look very naturalistic. This has actually done a surprisingly good job, if you're looking down, of actually looking like, you know, normal, proper walking should do. Actually a remarkably good job. And if you pull out your gun, like, obviously you go into a bit of a combat stance, just a nice little thing. I will not notice it 99% of the time, obviously. But yeah, it's a nice little touch, I'd say. Anyway, let's go into Hidden. It's a kind of suitably night time for a kind of a super stealthy night time raid. Let's just head into here into the Bison Steve and snipe off a couple of guys. Because fun fact about the Bison Steve, um, when you step through the door, there's a chance there's going to be like up to two guards directly ahead of you, or they might not be there. I don't know what determines like whether or not they're going to be there. I think it might just be complete random chance. So uh, let's see how lucky we get. And we have got one guy directly ahead of us. And oh, he's quite tough. Luckily, I've got a decent 10mm, and he appears to only have a tire iron, so that works for me. And, oh, he was going in for a dramatic dive, but down he goes. Alright, fine. So we've got the first guy down nice and easy. Use the computer to hack into this back room here, because luckily the computer is only easy, whereas the door is actually hard locked. And conveniently, you've got yourself a maintenance key right here. I don't think you need that for anything. I'll take it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that just uh, lets you unlock a door that's actually only, like, easy or very easy locked anyway. Meanwhile, on average lock safe here, you may recall last time I got my lockpick up to 48. Combine that with the sheriff's hat I'm wearing, I can actually do that now. Not much there, but worth it for a handful of shotgun ammo. And yet more expired stim packs. I get the feeling these are going to be quite common and potentially not very useful. In fact, yes, yeah, significantly less useful uh, than food. That reminds me, by the way, I've decided to kind of, like, impose a little bit of a rule on myself just to kind of make this a bit more fun and more survivally, which is um, I'm not going to put any more points into medicine at all. At this point, I'm just going to put points into survival because the higher your survival, the more effective food is. So I'm just going to kind of take nothing but survival from now on and, like, rely pretty much entirely on food. I'm not saying I'm not allowed to use stim packs. I'm just saying that I'm going to focus on survival over medicine because that'll be a nice little kind of fun difference to how I normally play this. Okay, back over to sniper weapon. Time to find the next guy. Oh, there he is! That'll be him right there then. Right, go over to that. Go over to pistol, because pistol is much, much better. 10mm is way, way better. Yeah, 80% chance to hit. I'll just go for the headshot there. And yeah, I thought he was going to be the other side of the hall, which can be... Oh, he does a nice little dramatic flip. How very, very elegant. We're going to have another guy at the far end of the corridor there. But he is, I very much doubt, going to find me. Let's just check where he is. I do forget, of course, I've been playing a lot of Fallout 4 Survival. I forget that the compass is a thing I can actually flipping use in this game. Ooh. Can you come around here? Do you want to come around here? That's fine if you do. Hello. Oh, you're wearing a hockey mask. That's lovely and dramatic of you. 95% chance to hit head. I'd say you're going to go down pretty quick. Beautiful. And off into this little side room that's very, very useful. And this here, uh, well, if you did happen to have 75 lockpick, unless you could open that door in the first room without using the computer, you're in luck here. You are in very good shape indeed. Of course, there is a floor safe here, right next to this nice convenient uh, Tales of a Junk Town jerky vendor, and some money that is indeed hard locked. And this, bloody hell. Right, over and covered already, beautiful. Uh, yes, this lock is indeed hard locked, and this is a very important little safe right here, so well worth coming back to. I'm going to simultaneously get rid of some food and some weight by actually eating some Brahmin steak. That'll get my uh, weight up to 130. It'll give me enough kind of carry capacity to get everything I want out of this place. And I'll also read that skill book right now, even though I'm not going to get the very maximum benefit out of it. But you know what? It's barter. I think we can do without gaining the maximum benefit. Now, time to make a choice, which is I could go in the front way because I could get the incinerator off that guy. But am I ever really going to use the incinerator? 
under this rule set. Or I could head in the back way. This door, I'm certain the, uh, the Bison Steve key opens up. Yes, it does. Be ready, because there's someone around here. There you go. I see her. Here you come. Is he coming around the corner? He might be, and if so, I can get the sneak attack. So long, friend. Dead. All right, so that now opens up the path down to, uh, yeah, Deputy Beagle, who I could just go and get now. In fact, I could just go and get him, then sneak back out again without ever taking on the rest of them. But if I do, yeah, I'm passing up the leader who's got the incinerator on him and possibly some better armor. I don't think so, but it's not impossible. Ooh, was that light always like that? Quite oh, like that light. That's good. This, ooh. It is night, actually, which means most of them will have gone to sleep. That's good. Ooh, hello. You over there. Ooh, you're the leader. You are the leader right there. So long, loser. And then, ooh, almost. Not quite. There you go. He's, oh, is he trying to... He's got an incinerator, but he's decided against using it on me. Marvellous. I think I hit him in the leg, which is unfortunate. Yeah, he's um he is currently limping. He's decided to come after me with uh, with his uh his tire iron there. That's a shame. Right, let's back off for a second. Let's make sure they just lose me. Some of these guys will actually have uh you know, some of these guys will have dynamite, so they need to be a little bit careful. Remember that corpse is there. He got around to me pretty quickly, actually, never mind. And just a few bullets in you goes down. Back to hidden. Oh, is it only you two? I thought there was way more people than that in here. Fine. I thought there was like four people in that final room. I tell you what, if he just kind of ran around the corner and tracked me down around here, possibly the people in New Vegas are a little bit better at tracking than the people in Fallout 4, which is hilarious. Right, let's get what you've got on you. I've seen this like many, many times before. He's got an incinerator, but he really doesn't like using it. He's got a massive preference for using the tire iron over the incinerator for whatever reason. All right, and here's we're okay for now. Oh no, you didn't even wake up. Well, that's tragic for you, isn't it? Critical strike on that guy, and I believe, I believe that's your lot. Ooh, I like the new work that's been done on this room. This room looks way nicer. Ooh, and the new vending machines too. In a dark room, glowing, that's very sexy. Right, let's just drink all of the Sunset Sarsaparilla just to get some bottle caps going on and potentially a star bottle cap. In fact, I don't think I've actually run into a single one yet, which is a shame. And you, my good man, have, yeah, some nice NCR money. I believe that's weightless. Okay, it looks like I think we've cleared out everyone on this floor. We could do the upper floor as well, but there's really no point. There's no benefit to it whatsoever. There's like a few little bits of loot, but I'm already pretty much at capacity, so there's really no point bothering. Purified water on the shelf here, though. That's worth grabbing. And even more purified water at the back. Lovely. And I do love, by the way, you can just basically shoot him in the face, kill him, and then immediately get the information off his corpse if that's what you want to do. This guy is the epitome of a character who in Fallout 4 would obviously be essentially you wouldn't be able to kill. Fallout New Vegas? Nah, just shoot his head off, grab it off his corpse, it's fine. He's just got the information in a diary. Oh, that's just marvellous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. Works for me. Obviously, I can keep him on side. Actually, you know what? I will. I'll actually speech 25 him just for the XP. Oh, well, of course. All right, and now let's quickly get outside before that Brahmin steak wears off. Because I'm going to have to do some buying and selling with Johnson Nash and make some difficult decisions about what equipment to take with me or not. Because, yes, this limited carry capacity is definitely going to cause problems. And Deputy Beagle is officially rescued. Well, that was quite an adventure. Problem is, there's still no law in Prim. What are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage? So yes, of course, Deputy Beagle doesn't want to be sheriff. He wants to just be deputy and wants me to find him a new sheriff. And of course, Beagle also gives me some information about heading to uh, Novak via Nipton. Now, first up, tough decisions with Johnson Nash. So first, a whole bunch of NCR currency that I've picked up off the, uh, the powder gangers and other raiders. That gets me a fair bit of money. Now, the incinerator is definitely getting sold. It's a fun, fun little thing, but to be honest, yeah, 12 weight is 10% of my entire carry capacity. It's got to go. Now I have to make some more difficult decisions. Um, okay, so the entirety of the dynamite stock is getting sold. In order that I don't lose money, I'll trade that out for some meeting people very gladly. And some hollow point 357 ammo. Yep, grab that whenever it's available. 
and some overcharge ammo for the energy cell as well. Now I personally genuinely do like the service rifle, I think it is a bit of an underrated weapon, however weighing 8.5 I can't quite justify it, it's just not really good enough, so that is going to get sold. Together with the powder charge I happen to have, I don't think I've got much use for that, I've got 5 frag mines, that's plenty enough for now. And we'll trade all that for some nice purified water, because we're going to go on a bit of a long road where we're not going to pass a fresh water source in a moment. Now next up I need to store some ammo somewhere, but before I go on my way, uh, the Sheriff question, obviously there's Myers up in the NCRCF, can't really be bothered with him, problem with him is he's actually inside that first room, and the Powder Gang is now hostile to me, meaning if I go in there I'll need to kill two of them, don't really want to bother. And as for the NCR, well, I could go with the NCR, but I don't think they really do the best for the town. Instead, I'd actually say Prim Slim here, the reprogrammed robot with his awesome sheriff hat. You know, he's already got the hat, so he's clearly the most qualified person. Uh, I'd say he's actually the best candidate. So as a result, I'm going to reprogram him. Uh, you need 30 signs, which I'm actually just short of. But if I have the right drugs or something... Yes, there we are. Mentats for Intelligence Plus 2. Just quickly have some Mentats. Beautiful, give myself some charisma, perception and intelligence there. I should have just boosted my science up to the ability to turn this guy into Prim's Sheriff, which should immediately give me a lovely big pile of experience without even leaving this room. Law enforcement protocols reinstated, partner. Initializing use of force authorization. Authorization found. Yeah! Lovely, so that's 330 experience just for doing that. Is that enough to get me to... Oh, just shy, never mind. And the other check is related to uh, Vance's gun. We don't need to worry about that. And um, what's Deputy Bugle's response to uh, the robot being the uh, the sheriff? I can't remember. My problem is that I'm no longer a deputy. I'm just a beagle now. Slim's all right. I don't wish him no harm. But the law to him is a set of logic. Not everything is black and white. I'm not sure a robot can ever understand that. So it seems he's been kind of fired because Prim doesn't really understand the need or concept of a deputy. Or maybe possibly Prim just fired uh, Beagle because Beagle is blatantly completely idiotic and incompetent. So maybe Prim's the clever one after all. Now, on my way out of town, I've been reminded that I did forget something. I'm just going to quickly return to the sheriff's house here. And under the reloading bench is a second cowboy repeater. Lots of guns just kind of hidden out of the way in the sheriff's office here. I don't think it's in a deliberate little bit of storytelling here. That the sheriff kind of knew something bad might happen to him. So, you know, like, he always kept, like, a gun hidden under the bed and a gun hidden under the reloading bench. If, like, anyone ever, like, came in with hostile intent, he could, like, you know, pretend to be unarmed and he could just, like, grab a gun out from under somewhere and shoot them. Now, a second one of those is very, very useful because it means, obviously, I can use my repair skill to get this one. Because even though this one's incredibly crappy, obviously, with repair, you can make a fair bit of difference to that. So that's got the cowboy repeater up to, what was that, 19 damage? Yeah, 19 damage. We're starting to get somewhere now. At this point, significantly stronger than the 10mm. Obviously, much better than the Varmint Rifle. The Varmint Rifle is already really struggling to keep up, quite frankly. I may well have to uh, bin that sooner rather than later, because it's just not quite doing the job. And indeed, very quickly nipping back to Good Springs, I'm going to use Easy Pete's house here as a nice place for me to actually store some goods. Because Easy Pete's very odd, by the way. This is his house, and he lives alone. But he always sleeps in this little crappy bed, which leaves this bed completely unused, and it's not marked as owned. So you can actually... Ooh, coming down off the Mentats, that's never fun. Uh, so you can actually, like, sleep in this bed and make this double bed yours. He just doesn't mind you basically moving in. And all the containers aren't marked as uh, used, so you can use all of them. No problem whatsoever as well. In fact, ooh, just help myself to a flipping... Uh, ooh, a second Merc Grunt outfit. That's actually very useful. Can I actually get that up to... No, it doesn't actually give me any increased damage uh, threshold. But at least the condition is a little bit higher now. But it's just the lovely thing that, like, you know, you've basically got containers and a bed here. So Good Springs is just so friendly. So I'm going to use this container here to store some stuff. In particular, yeah, having kind of thought over it, I'm going to get rid of the Varmint Rifle right now. The Cowboy Repeater is going to rapidly replace that. It doesn't have a proper scope on it, but the little kind of sight it's got on it with the iron sight aiming will do as a replacement. Now what's more important is I get rid of all this bloody ammo I'm not using. And I can pick it up later if I have to. So I'll keep the 357 and the 10 millimeter. Uh, the 12 can go, the 20 stays, all of that 5.56 five, goes, that's heavy, 9mm tons of that goes. Energy cell will keep because the plasma pistol is amazing, and dump the flame of fuel as well. And that's got my weight down to 84, much more reasonable, I was carrying, yeah, like 30 pounds worth of ammo there, so definitely just to clear all of that out. 
And that's also while being fairly heavily weighed down by flipping purified waters. I got like, what was it? I think six to eight purified water out of the Bison Steve. We'll drink through that pretty quickly. That weighs one each. So that water really weighs a lot, which actually makes sense. It does make sense if you're going to go out on a long journey and you want to have plenty of purified water with you. That water should make up a very significant part of your carry capacity. Water is bloody heavy. And with that, we can leave Prim behind and head out into the wider world here. Beautiful, the massive open plain beyond Prim. Love it. May as well swing over to the right while I'm passing by. I can't remember if this water here, is it? Oh, no, that is irradiated water. So this, there is like a little kind of pool of water there. But unlike precious good springs, uh, that water is indeed polluted. So a little bit more on the dangerous side. Swing over this way, I would may as well just kind of hit the uh, the fast travel location over here because I'm pretty sure there's like no danger here. It's just a free 10 experience points. There is also, while we're kind of passing through Prim, a different way to make it through to Novak that many of you may be unfamiliar with other than going through Nipton. If for whatever reason you don't want to go through Nipton, there's another way to do it. It's actually quite fun and interesting. So I'm going to very quickly show that off. That we're not actually going to go that way. There's a lot of kind of good, easy quests for loads of XP by going by Nipton. So uh, we'll definitely do that. But I do want to show off the other way as well. So you may recall the Powder Ganger Camp South. That is the, uh, the camp where Chavez was. Now completely deserted, the Powder Gangers are long since gone. Nothing here but just a few bits and pieces. Just check there's no like... Uh, Sunset Star, Sarsaparilla, Bottle Caps or anything. There is a dinosaur that's got no weight, so obviously we're taking that. Other than that, no. Nothing of note whatsoever. A little note from the Powder Gang. Some of the fellas further north are trying to organise. We're starting to think it's a good idea. Got to pull resources if we're going to survive out here. Sure, you've noticed the decline in travellers. They're getting wise, so should we. That is hinting at something else. There are, in fact, a few more Powder Gangers in this game, but not very many. Now, if we follow this train track... Just heading south here, we find a location that uh, plenty of you will like never have seen before because there's basically no reason you'd ever come this way. The game doesn't tell you to come this way. There's like there's no sub quest or unmarked quest that tell you to come this way whatsoever. There's just a railroad here that you know you can follow if you want to, and it will lead you. Here we are to a little kind of well, it actually is a marked location. It's just a marked location that is literally used for nothing in the entire game. This is the, I think it's called the Emergency Train Repair Yard. The Emergency Service Rail Yard. I feel like I was really bloody close here. There is nothing of interest here. There is no, uh, I think there's kind of, there's no enemies. There's no chance of anything spawning here. Actually, I think actually if you've really annoyed the Legion, this can actually be a Legion spawn point uh, for no well-explained reason. And there's a handful of stuff you can get over there. So we just kind of head up onto here. Yeah, there's a little med kit here. We can kind of get a few little bits and pieces, but nothing major. A sink if you're desperately dehydrated, but heavily irradiated water. Definitely don't want to touch that if we don't need it. Ah, but this is a source of a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Bottle Cap. Very, very nice. Oh my goodness, was that two? Yeah, I think we just got two Star Bottle Caps there. Very, very nice. Because yes, I do actually want to uh, do Legend of the Star and all that stuff. I've never done it on the channel before. And like, I really want this run through to cover all the stuff I've never shown off before. Because sometimes when you're doing a challenge run, you don't show off the unnecessary stuff. So I really want this run to show off everything I've never put up before. And show you all sorts of stuff that I think 99% uh, of you will never have seen. I want at least every episode to contain something you've probably never seen before in New Vegas. Just to show you how big and amazing this game is. Now, the reason you do actually want to come up this way is because there is another location off to the east of this one. And this is a shortcut through to Novak, albeit a shortcut with a catch. So you can already see the marker on your compass there. There's something up in the hills. So let's head up into the hills and let's do it really, really bloody cautiously. Because some of these hills are actually like almost too steep to walk up. You've got to be really, really careful because like you may not even realise you can walk up this hill. This looks like it might be impassable, but it's not. You can just about make it up if you choose your angles carefully. But make it up to the top and we are approaching. Welcome to Prim Pass. A little shortcut you can make up. Actually, yeah, I think if you actually turn up a little bit earlier, it's even easier. But yeah, I find uh, going to the rail yard and then turning up the easy way, because then you can, like, remember where it is. Now, where's our friend? Because this leads us out to Novak, but with a very severe catch. In fact, I'm going to go over to my plasma pistol and install my overcharge ammo that I've picked up. This here is pretty much what I want it to be doing. Damage 29, DPS 49, and that also takes the target's damage threshold down by 5 points. Alright, that's worth doing. 
Oh, and we're straight into caution. I don't... Okay, back off. I don't want him to see me before I see him. In fact, you know what this is the perfect opportunity for? I'm carrying around three stealth boys. They weigh one each. Let's actually use one of those just for once. Perfect. So up here in Prim Pass, we have... There you go. Where he over bloody there? That is a blind death claw. So way over that. Was he really texting me? Um, and I don't know if it's definitely... Oh, by the way, the new style laser pistol is beautiful with this. Uh, yes, that over there is a blind death claw. Blind death claws are oddly more perceptive than regular ones. They have normal stats, they have 500 hit points, do 125 per swing with their claws. They're utterly, utterly terrifying. And 125 pretty much can one hit me at this point. These things are horrible. Um, so yes, this is Prim Pass. It is a shortcut through Prim to Novak, so you can actually skip a large part of the journey. But yes, it is indeed the pass is guarded by a blind death claw. There is a Bright Brotherhood follower here, so that's an energy weapon spawn. Ah, it's just another recharger rifle. Uh, not even that good. In fact, I think I already uh, sold the first one I had. I didn't even consider it worthwhile keeping. And we're straight to caution. Oh yeah, he knows I'm here potentially. These things are extremely perceptive. In fact, even with a stealth boy, I might not be able to make it. Yep, I can't make it past. And yep, he can one-hit kill me. Right, I'm going to see if I can actually get past him. But for whatever reason, the game did indeed decide that uh, blind death claws, their perception stat is actually higher than regular death claws. So they are very, very perceptive. In fact, I increasingly believe that potentially I might need to see if I can just snipe this bloody thing off. Um, I really doubt I can kill it though. Yeah, 500 hit points together with a uh, 15 damage threshold. I honestly don't think I'm going to have the ability to take this thing out uh, in my current form. I'm going to need way better weapons before I can do it. With your hit points cut in half by uh, this mod, yeah, these guys can one hit kill you if you've kind of got some basic armor. Yeah, 125 reduced down to 121 by 4 damage threshold. Oh, hello. Oh, this might be a good angle. And let's see what we can do. No, and advance defense. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'm going to die in about half a second. Yeah, fine. That's definitely not happening. But for the sake of fairness, I will actually still use the stealth boy. I'll kind of consider that my penalty for coming up here, but not actually sneaking past him. But yeah, actually, um, he is way more perceptive than a normal death claw. So even if you can like sneak past the normal death claws and kind of do the shortcut via uh, kind of Sloan into Vegas, even then Prim Pass is dangerous. But yeah, this will basically lead you out to Harper's Shack, which is very, very close by to Novak. So you can skip the um, the Nipton part of the journey entirely. But arguably, I'd say it's just like not really worth doing. So back to our more traditional route. There's something kind of fun up ahead, which I kind of, I don't know if I've actually specifically drawn attention to before, but I find it quite amusing, which is, ah, I think they have... Have they already spawned? Uh, there is on this road a couple of powder gangers that spawn and they're not interested in you instead they're interested in there they are so those two guys down there actually i'm not sure if they're paddling they might just be normal no they're just normal convicts now those guys are actually way more interested in uh investigating the rest stop over there but the rest stop has jackals in it so actually those two guys will actually go to war against each other there we go. The jackals have finally actually caught up with the convicts. A feral ghoul just ran down from the hills as well. This is now a three-way fight. That's fun. Uh, so where's that ghoul if I can spot him? Hang on. I assume the ghoul's dead already. The jackal should very, very easily take out the convicts. There's someone moving over there. Who are you? Uh, too far away to get a bat shot. More ghouls coming in from the hills. Don't normally see the ghouls actually making it this far. Uh, ghouls used to get good karma for taking them out in New Vegas. Not anymore. That's been taken away. Uh, again, it's quite hard to get your karma back up. You actually have to do what's clearly actively good things rather than just murdering bad people. Murdering bad people is no longer morally good. It's morally neutral, which, you know, I'd say makes a lot more sense. So Jackal Gang Leader's over there. Barely took a hit from all of this. And she's actually wearing decent armor. And I completely missed her. Lovely. Oh, yeah. She's actually quite tough. I'm going to go around the side here. Head round to the... She'll see me in a second. Unless she's not got a gun. Is she actually armed? Or is she going to be... Oh, yeah. She's armed. And she'll probably have a decent gun. Uh, where are the two guys? No one around here. Nevada Highway Patrol Station. She'll be around here in a second. And then... There we go. Now she's nice and close. Shoot her in the head. Oh, not enough. Yeah, enemies in this game. Oh, got a critical... 
Beautiful. Got 10% of the way to an achievement. They're beautiful. Get to improve my own 10 millimeter from doing that. Nice. Fixing things. Not sure what happens when you do that. I love the achievements in New Vegas. How, like, just doing things gets you little extra achievements. Oh, come on. This thing's just been repaired. It shouldn't be jamming. And I guess it looks like the, uh, the criteria for being in good condition is actually quite high for this thing. So that's fine. Now, yeah, there should be one guy around the corner. Dead anyway, he must have been the one that was fighting the ghouls, fine. Yeah, don't know why the ghouls came down from the hills, uh, I swear they didn't used to. Maybe they've been moved slightly. Ah, another 10mm, perfect. Ah, and I've leveled up from all this as well. And some jet as well. Merc grunt, exactly what I'm already wearing. I'll take that just in the off chance again I can improve my own gear. And level up to level 5. Now what I'm about to do is not necessarily the most sensible thing in the world, but I kind of want to show it off, so I'm kind of going to just kind of get here a little bit quicker. So my lockpick currently at 48, so I can do average locks. I can move that up to 64 right now, or if I want to be a little bit more precise, 63 base, 65 while wearing the sheriff's hat. And that gives me one extra point, I will put that into guns. 42, the answer to everything, marvellous. Because obviously I do not get a perk this level. This is one of my non-perk levels. Now I do need to think really carefully about this by the way. Because uh, obviously under this rule set with the level cap at 35. You only get, what is it? Because you get your first perk at level 2 and then every other level thereafter. Uh, yeah, you only get to take 17 perks in the entire game. And that's assuming you hit the level cap. So the number of perks you actually get is relatively low. So some perks that I would normally take... I might not because leveling so much slower now than it would be normally and just the number of perks we're allowed to take is relatively limited. So, having actually got this fast travel location, which is bloody convenient, I'm going to very quickly nip back to Prim. Because you may recall earlier this very part, we came across a safe that was hard locked and I did flag that that was an important safe. It is a very important safe. Let's go crack that open. So, into this back room again. My base lockpick at 65, just like I was planning. Do a quick locksmith reader. Crack this here open. There you go, gotcha. And we get out of that. Some 357 rounds, bottle caps, just a few cases. May as well take those because they don't wear anything and we can use those to make a bit more ammo later. Pre-war money, two bits of psycho, two stim packs, a super stim pack, and most importantly, a wrench. And probably Lucky as well. Welcome to Lucky. Lucky is this game's unique variant of the 357. Comes to you in perfect condition, only weighs 2.5. Very, very nice indeed. Very, very light. Uh, this thing is very, very good. Lucky, as you might anticipate from the name, does indeed have a luck-based unique perk as well. Um, unique guns are really interesting in New Vegas. Some of them are worse than their kind of like base normal counterparts. And the reason for that is unique weapons very often refuse to take mods. Um, so often like a base normal weapon when fully like in full condition and modded up actually is way better than like the base um, special unique variant. A really good example of that is the Gatling laser. A fully modded Gatling laser in New Vegas is way better than the unique variant of the Gatling laser. So worth keeping in mind. But for like early game especially if you can get hold of a unique variant early they're almost certainly amazing. So don't forget to improve my 10mm pistol with the good quality one I just got there. Damage 17, not bad at all. And indeed, lucky. Damage 25. Doesn't require any gun skill to use. Very, very good. Even my cowboy repeater is currently only at 19. But lucky, however, has a different little kind of benefit to it. Aside from looking bloody sexy... Oh, look at that thing. That thing was already sexy, but the, uh, the new skin for that is just bloody good. Gorgeous. I mean, the downside is obviously it doesn't have like a proper little scope on it or anything, but blimey hell. It is more powerful than the Cowboy Repeater, at least for the moment, and yes, has the advantage that only weighs 2.5, is more powerful, and also gets more critical hits. It is more likely to score a critical hit, so very, very good indeed. Now, I'd need to go and check the maths. I'm not 100% sure on this, but my brain is telling me that the chance of this thing getting a critical is 2.5 times more likely than, like, a normal pistol. Meaning, is this the most likely pistol in the game to get... No! The little tiny crappy silence pistol, the one you can steal from Chet, that actually has a slightly better chance of a critical, I believe. Uh, and that also gets bonus critical damage when this doesn't. This just gets normal critical damage. But it is beautiful and amazing and incredibly light. So, even though the Cowboy Repeater is technically better, I'm going to go and store the Cowboy Repeater away and use this for now because this run has just kind of accidentally turned into Fallout 4 survival because I'm prioritizing pistols because they weigh so little. 
So following morning and back at the little kind of highway patrol thing here. And a fun new discovery here. I believe this is the first time I've come across this variant. The Merc Adventurer outfit. Energy weapons plus 10, science plus 5. So some sort of science themed adventure. If you were going to double down on the actual uh, on the plasma pistol, which would not be a terrible idea in the slightest, yeah, that thing might actually be worth considering. But uh, again, I think pretty soon I'm going to just have to find some better armor than damage threshold 4. It's just not giving me the level of protection I need. Anyway, let's go into here, shall we? And we've got ourselves some jackal members in here. Looks to me like they're going to go down much more easily now. And oh my goodness, look how many shots this thing gets in vats. Beautiful. And she explodes in the first shot and you don't actually appear to, uh, yeah, you don't actually appear to have any weapons on you. That's unfortunate for you. And down she goes straight away. Move over to a 10mm pistol because we've got bloody mantises. I hate mantises. They're so bloody hard to hit. So bloody difficult. Uh, yeah, in fact, actually, I think both of their heads popped straight off. Marvellous. Oh, and this... Wait, why was she coming at me with... Uh, I guess possibly she knew that she was about to die if she came at me with uh, using her grenade rifle. Yes, we do indeed have the first grenade rifle of the game. Weight 6, but I think I saw my... Uh, my carry weight go up quite significantly just for picking those up. How much do those weigh each? 0 0.5 each per grenade. I'll take it for now. The base weapon itself only weighs 6. Yeah, I'll take it for now and we'll see how we do. But I may well trade that in uh, later. And, ooh, again, another 10mm pistol to make mine a tiny bit better. And actually a significant improvement. My 10mm pistol up to 18 damage. Oh, that leather texture. That's quite nice. Don't forget in here, by the way, uh, there is a copy of Guns and Bullets. Very, very welcome. I'm just going to take that right away. Again, no point kind of storing that up, to be honest. And if I recall correctly, yes, there is a Mantis Nymph hidden behind this door. He's, like, going to be at the door. But when I crack the door open, the door's going to crack open and kind of trap him in the corner. So we won't be able to get out again, which I quite like. No, poor little thing. Dead. I'm really questioning whether these guys are even worth killing, to be honest. Like... There's quite a few of them in here. I'm pretty sure they can't open that door. There's none of them that can get out of here. I think that guy has... I think... Oh, I see a star bottle cap. Yeah, I see it. Why don't I just get an experience point? I'm also kind of wishing I'd kept just like one thing of dynamite. Because if I could just like throw one thing of dynamite in there, that might be nice. Oh, the grenade rifle. Sure. Why not? Uh, let's just open the cell. No, no. Open the cell door. Let them get nice and close to each other. Open the cell door. And come on, guys. Guys, come. Come, 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 come. You going to come? There you are. Yeah, there you are. All together. Nice. That is exactly what I wanted to do there. Everyone dead in a single hit. Uh, do you have anything on you? Just a Mantis foreleg, which as far as I'm aware, doesn't actually do anything and is barely even worth carrying, even though it doesn't weigh much. Oh, I'm sorry, I just blew your, I blew your leg off. I'm very sorry. Another star bottle cap. We're actually doing pretty well on that uh, count. Together with, oh, he's actually got a, a unique card on him. You don't see that. You see those in like, loads of traders' inventories, uh, but generally you don't sit around that much. Another cowboy repeater. Like, you can, if you want to at this point, be starting to get the cowboy repeater up a little bit in terms of the amount of uh, the amount of damage it can do. Mm, leather armor. Damage threshold six. An extra two damage threshold. Weighs nine. Yeah, because two extra points of damage threshold is like two less damage per shot. And I've only got 120 health or so. So I'd say that's definitely kind of worth moving over to. So over to leather armor. Goodbye, Merc Grunt outfit. You did me well, but you just weren't quite good enough. Well, that's all we've really got on here. Let's be on our way. Can't deny you look a lot more badass when you've got the leather armor on. Though it does bug me to this day that the uh, the male leather armor, even though it's the same thing that you get off the same people, if you put on the leather armor and you're a man, it looks different to how you do when you're a woman. And the male leather armor looks significantly more badass with more kind of like straps and it's a lot more protective. The female leather armor, which you'll be more familiar with because that's uh, what Sunny Smiles is wearing, is much more figure hugging and shows off her ass a lot more. It just bugs me that, you know, it's the same piece of armor. In fact, you could see a male raider wearing it you put it on and it looks completely different anyway up the road here making our way towards the ncr outpost there's a little kind of garage over on this side be a little bit careful around here there are giant rad scorpions i wouldn't mind having them out of the way so i'm going to verify something first which is ahead of me 
there's a decent chance that there is a trader who will have spawned in this sort of area, who's just kind of passing through and resting. If there is, I'll aggro the scorpions and lure them over to this area because then we can take them out together. Hello? Yes, there he is. There is indeed a trader right there. So let's get the scorpions over here and he'll help out with me. Uh, hello. Yeah, rad scorpion. Actually, he doesn't even look that tough. Hello, guys. Rad scorpion. Yeah, there you go. And the rest of you too, please. I uh, kind of want all of you. There you go. Uh, have I upset all of you yet? I think I've upset at least two of them. Are there any more? Uh, Rad Scorpion over there looks like he's trapped in the ground. I'll try and get his attention if I can. Uh, actually, you know what? I won't do that. Instead, I'm going to start running. I'm going to put my gun away to get a little bit more movement speed. Because now I've got Rad Scorpions right on top of me. Jump on top of the car. They've already decided to move in and have decided to draw the attention. I will help them out. I don't want them to die. I wouldn't mind trading with them in time. I'll get a couple of Rad Scorpion poison glands. And there's totally another one. I did aggro another one. Where is he? Oh, there's one up there for some reason. Ah, oh, that's odd. Didn't realise there was going to be one up there. Hello. Uh, nothing on the compass. Where'd the other one get himself to? There's one over there. Hello. Yeah, I see you. Hello. Come over here. There you go. I feel like actually I can handle this one by myself. He does not feel that... Oh, there's two of them. And straight back over to the bloody traders. They'll help out again. Though actually it looks like they got caught up on a car. So, oh, for a minute there I thought that uh, scorpion was actually uh, shooting me with a laser. But no, that wasn't him. That was the, uh, the guy behind him. More rad scorpion glands. I do want to do this for a reason, by the way, rather than just like clearing these guys out for the sake of it. I do actually have a reason for what I'm doing. So that's four glands. He's now going forward to blood. Oh, he's taking the fight to the rad scorpions at this point. Oh, uh, no mercy. No mercy from these traders. And they are definitely all dead. Lovely. And that is a fifth rad scorpion poison gland. Beautiful. And that clears out this location, which is very, very useful indeed. Like, this area is actually a bit of law connected to an area we haven't actually got to yet, up to uh, Nipton. Uh, but it's kind of worth visiting here while you happen to be passing by. There's... Oh! Bloody crow startled me there. Marvellous. Wait, hang on. Why am I in danger? Uh-oh, I think I may have forgotten about a rad scorpion. Forgotten about a rad scorpion? Have I? Hello? I'm seeing red. What the... Have you got one? Oh, it's a baby! He's your baby who's got stuck in the ground. You're gonna die now. Yeah, you can call it small as much as you want. We all know you just killed a baby. There's another poison gland on him, that's nice. So yeah, this building is all uh, locked up. I think there might be something, yeah, there's some stuff in the back here, which is welcome. So you can basically just help yourself to a uh, pile of sunset sarsaparilla. Just kind of again, just kind of immediately. Oh, hang on. Uh, tobacco, coyote tobacco chew. Uh, sleep minus 30. Ah, agility plus one. I didn't know that did that. That's quite nice. And then we've got a crate here, just loads of sunset sarsaparilla. I'm just going to get all of this. I'm just going to kind of drink it down. But yeah, the main thing you want is this building over here. This building is open. Though again, another little kind of uh, crate of sunsets as brother over here. Though just one, sadly. I think there's nothing in here. No, good, we're safe. Uh, but yes, there is a little kind of uh, stash. This is where the mayor of Nipton, who was a bit of a bastard, as we'll kind of discover later this part, uh, basically decided to stash all his stuff. So he's kind of got himself like a whole pile of supplies here, including, ooh, some sugar bombs, very, very nice. Crunchy mute fruit, uh, some more dirty water if you need it, but I've got plenty of purified water so I won't bother. Crispy squirrel bits, some rad away. Yeah, he just kind of kept a bunch of stuff here as well, which is nice. And you can actually find uh, the second half of his journal here if you're interested in his story. But most importantly, well, kind of arguably most importantly, a gun cabinet locked average here. So nothing useful at all. A couple of 9mm pistols, which I'm not using. But I'll keep the 9mm ammo because 9mm ammo can be useful. There's a couple of decent-ish guns that use 9mm ammo. But nothing I'll be kind of going to in a big hurry. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight to Nipton, which is faster going this way than it is to actually kind of head up to the NCR first. I prefer going this way. Uh, on the way, we're going to run in some ants. They're a fairly easy XP, so I'm just going to kill them on the way past. I'm going to use the shotgun because I don't get much use out of this thing, so I kind of may as well get some use out of it now because it's quite appropriate for dealing with these guys. Unlike some ants you'll run into later in the game, these ones do not actually have... Uh, yeah, these ones can't breathe fire. So, yeah, and they have uh, no damage threshold, so a shotgun is quite a good way of taking care of them. They do appear to be having a small problem actually locating me, though. Uh, hello. Yeah, would you like to actually fight me? 
Okay, now you would. Beautiful. Okay, now I've murdered one of them. They're a lot more interested in me, including that one that's got itself a little bit... Ah, you figured it out. Beautiful. And giant soldier ant, shotgun at point blank range. Kind of hold your nerve. These things will do a lot of damage to you, but uh, yeah, if you're... I'm just make sure there's not one that's got behind me here. But if you hold your nerve and just shoot him in the head at point blank range with a shotgun, you'll do good work here. Ant meat. Uh, I'm not sure what you can really cook that up into. So I'm going to take some and I'll actually have a look at that in the menu later. Because I'm just trying to figure out what the best items related to uh, food are. But there are way less ants here than I'm remembering. I remember there being many, many more ants than this. I remember having to fight off loads of ants. Maybe they're more in they just happen to have spawned in that direction at the moment. That's fine. Am I even... Yeah, I'm in caution. Uh, not danger. I'm going to avoid... Do I want to avoid those guys? Yeah, I want to avoid these guys. But I do want to trigger the event that's... Oh, two guys up there. I think I recognize these two events. That's the, um, the what's its name? The two people who are killing each other over some nice, uh, star bottle caps. There's Thomas. There's Jacqueline. And the question is, now, either of these people can win the fight. Thomas wins it the vast majority of the time, but it's not guaranteed. Um, so him and Jacqueline are currently fighting each other. Now, who's going to win here? Thomas is at... Actually, they're about even. Thomas is just cowering. He's not going to turn on me. He's going to go for Jacqueline. But yeah, Thomas ought to win eventually. They're just taking pot shots at each other. But he seems to want to... They're having a very odd fight here. They're really not quite sure whether they want to be fighting or not. It's kind of important to keep track of these guys. Because on the off chance that like you can't find one of their bodies, that's a really big loss of... Oh, screw it. Screw you! That's... Oh, you're surprising. I forgot you're actually quite tough, aren't you? Um, Yeah, we'll get you out of the way. There you go. Head crippled. Down you go. Get your stuff off you. Uh, so another 10mm pistol. Good condition. That's nice. Uh, Raid of Badlands armour. Action points plus 10. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. So two star bottle caps. And now, presumably, you will run up to me and thank me. Thanks for the help. That crazy bitch just attacked me out of nowhere. I think what she really wanted was my lucky charm necklace. A uh, lucky charm necklace, you say? Yeah, with 50 speech, you can get him to hand them over. Don't even mention it if you don't want to get into a fight. Instead, just advise him to be more careful in the future, okay? Yeah, indeed. Bad luck. Terrible, terrible luck there. Bye. There you go. Thomas taken care of. I'm guessing, oh yes, I'm guessing murdering someone uh, to get their star bottle caps is indeed uh, bad karma. Kind of makes sense there. Even more flipping 10mm pistols. Leather armor I can improve my own with. Seven star bottle caps. That's where you want to kill both of those people and get their stuff. So, pretty damn solid leather armor at this point, but it's only damage threshold 6. It looks like it really can't go any higher than that. I can't remember what it is in the base game, but I think they've slightly downgraded that. I'll stick with uh, Lucky for now. Got some smoke there in the corner of my eye. And with that done, actually, how many star bottle caps do I even have on me? It must be actually quite a few. Yeah, I'm already up to 23 for not even having reached Nipton. That's a really solid amount. That's, uh, I think that's just about all of them. In fact, I'm generally not sure if that's 100% of them. I might have missed like one or two. But I've done a pretty good job there. Hello, Oliver Swanick. You're going to be just fine. Hello. Yeah! Who won the lottery? I did! Oh, well done. Congratulations. Off you go. And we're just going to let him go. It's fine. And the reason we're going to let him go, by the way, is because he's basically now going to... Um, if you don't kill him, he's going to immediately uh, run off into Rad Scorpion territory and get himself killed. Uh, there's basically, like, you can if you kill all the Rad Scorpions, he will be just fine. Uh, but, like, eventually the Rad Scorpions will respawn. He'll kind of just get himself lost. But, yeah, I don't know why why he would possibly just decide he wants to run off in this direction. But, yeah, there you go. He's decided to just run off in that direction. And now he just starts cowering down there in the lake bed. And uh, sooner or later, some Rad Scorpions will find him and eat him. And you can tell he already can detect there's danger nearby because... Uh, He's going into the cowering position, so he'll kind of like, you know, run away from them. But eventually he will indeed just get himself eaten. There's basically no way to keep him alive. You can you can keep him alive if you just literally babysit him, but he doesn't actually go anywhere. I find that a bit of a shame, actually. It would be kind of nice if you, like, you know, went to Prim and tried to join Prim and, like, Prim figured out who he was and shot him or something. Actually, that'd be really cool. 
If you'd already imposed a sheriff, the sheriff would shoot him dead the moment he got to Prim. If there wasn't, then he could actually, like, uh, go and join Prim and no one would ever realise. That'd be really cool. Now, there's loads of really cool stuff in Nipton other than just the, uh, the Legion. So let's not worry about the Legion right now. Instead, I'm going to clear out the rest of the town first. Obviously, just about every house has some, like, basic good survival stuff here because there's lots of refrigerators and all sorts. So help yourself to all the purified water that you could find. If you're looking to make money, lots of the fridges contain things like vodka. Vodka's got a very very good um, kind of uh, carry weight to value uh, ratio of 1 to 20. Pretty damn solid, so take that with you if you're looking for money instead. First house on the right as you enter town, another star bottle cap up on the shelf there. That's uh, this house right here, by the way. And somebody's firing at something. Hello. Where's that firing coming from? Never mind, I'll probably find it in a second. Head over here to the right into, like, the trailer park at the edge of town. There's some good stuff in here. There'll just be a couple of uh, scorpions guarding the area together with a crow just kind of sitting around there. There you are. There's the scorpion that's guarding the area. Dead in one hit because you get critical strikes like crazy with Lucky. Oh, hello. Was it you who was firing a second ago? There was just a random prospector here who I think may have killed one of the scorpions for me because I swear there's normally two. I think it must have been her that was firing. And a convenient campfire here. Perfect, so I can check what we can do with ant meat. Well, fire ant meat can become a fire ant fricassee. Uh, 120 food and, wow, plus one health for one minute. That's very, very impressive for with uh, cram flour and fire ant meat. To be honest, flour is relatively uncommon. You won't get that very often. I need survival 75 to do it. But yeah, that's a big, long period of healing. I'm not sure if I'm missing something there, but I literally could not see ant meat anywhere in the... Uh, the menu there, so possibly ant meat you can't cook into anything, you just have to uh, eat it raw. So if so, uh, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that and I've got something wrong there, but uh, yeah, it looks like uh, ant meat you cannot cook into anything. Now, a fun thing here of course, uh, some people did put up a fight to the legion. There is a shredded legion pile right here, so if you open up the ash pile you can figure out this was indeed a legion person, because they had, uh, yes, some legion recruit armor and a machete. They got uh, completely destroyed by this guy who had a laser rifle. Possibly the first laser rifle in the game. In fact, I can't think of any way you'd have got one earlier. Laser rifles are really, really good. I like laser rifles. Uh, take his outfit, by the way. 1.5 weight to 64 value is very, very good indeed. And laser rifles, once you've upgraded them, are pretty damn powerful indeed. In the later game, a laser rifle will be very, very useful. I'll pick this up for now and I might dump it back in Good Springs later, but I won't be taking it with me just for the moment at least. But yeah, I'd say once you've got them kitted up, I'd say laser rifles are actually one of my favourite sniping weapons in the game. Because like once you've got a scope on them and they're generally upgraded, yeah, they're pretty damn solid. Obviously, immediately on the left as you enter the town, there's some good stuff in the general store. Bolt cars right here will give you the quest to rescue the Powder Gangers. And if you do want to pick up some good karma, you can give him medic. So at least that used to be good karma. I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. Giving medicine to someone who's had their legs shattered by the Legion strokes me as morally good. And I can indeed spare some medics. Let's give him one dose. So I've handed it over. And yes, that is indeed some karma gained. Beautiful. With my high lockpick skill, I can very easily make my way upstairs. Though I don't think there's very much up here, to be honest. One safe for some pre-war money and caps. Nothing major. Now, at the very rear of the town on the left, as you walk up towards the town hall, obviously you've got the hotel where the NCR were ambushed. So kind of an important part of the story, but also a good source of loot. See, what you've got here is a whole bunch of dead NCR, which you don't see too many of, and every single one of them has a dog tag on them. Interestingly, um, the NCR who die in the prison don't have dog tags on them. I don't know why that is, they just don't. So you can get yourself four dog tags here. Dog tags will be useful later, so start collecting them whenever you can. You can also improve some NCR armor here if you want as well, but obviously if you are going to wear NCR armor, don't wear it right now. The Legion don't like it. Now this house here, right to the right of the uh, the town hall itself, with the, uh, the Brahmin skull on the mailbox, this has something a little interesting in it. And that is indeed a mad Mr. Gutsy prototype. So just, um, yeah, take that out nice and quick. And fortunately, Lucky can handle that very, very easily. That thing is, like, relatively tough. Make sure you've got a decent weapon to take care of that thing. Uh, interestingly, it's not taken out, which would suggest, like, the Legion either didn't want to or couldn't destroy it. Because, yeah, it is still actually uh, active when you stumble across it, which is fun. There is also nicely in the same house plasma pistol under this guy's workbench, so you can improve your own pistol from that. 
That thing's up to 25 damage now. I'm doing the same damage with the plasma pistol as I am with Lucky, but Lucky is, of course, superior on account of, yes, the uh, digital chance of a critical hit, which is very, very welcome indeed. And just as I was saying there, you can indeed, obviously, uh, find a legionary dead in this place. This is very interesting, by the way. Um, legionaries who are dead do not drop legion ears until you've started the legion ear quest over in Camp Forlorn Hope, with the exception of the dead legion who you find in Nipton. They do, and they're completely unique for that. Um, like, if I go and kill all of the guys outside uh, by the town hall, which I'm not going to because I'm not a mad person, uh, yeah, they don't drop legion ears, but um, the dead legion that you find dotted around these houses do. And as far as I'm aware, there's like, there's no explanation for it, it's just a bit of an oversight. Ah, and some more leather armour at the back of this room, very, very nice. But again, even though I get this thing higher and higher condition, doesn't pass uh, damage threshold 6. While you're at a workbench, feel free to recycle everything you can. Just you may as well get more ammo. And of course, the one house I think everyone does know about in this place, uh, this house right at the front of the town with the sandbags, obviously has some very good stuff in it as well. Not least you do indeed have some scorpions, albeit they are bark scorpions, so not really that dangerous to be honest, rather than normal rad scorpions buried in here. But yes, this is the house of traps. I like the house of traps. The house of traps is awesome. Turn on your pit boy light, be very, very careful, get the mines up, you've got mines, generators, bark scorpion, I think I can, can I just shoot you now? Yeah, looks like it. There are literally traps everywhere, but obviously it's much easier to uh, see them if you're on a high resolution. Where's the thing to, there you are, activate the tripwire, disarm that, uh, that is a, a sh yep, shotgun trap right there, beautiful. Uh, another guy right here, again, has an ear on him, even though it doesn't really make sense for him to do so. The Legion armor is actually not bad, but I don't really want to go around wearing it, because it will upset some people. Disarm the mine. Another tripwire. Another mine. The pressure plate, however, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to actually uh, turn that thing off. Oh, hello! Oh, there was a third one of you hidden in there. Sorry, I didn't realize. It's my mistake. And now he's backing... Okay, he decided he wanted to back off there. There must have been three... Yeah, there was three hidden in there. I didn't bloody realise. Oh, and I've been poisoned as well. Ow. That really stings in this mode. Good old anti-venom. Well, you know what? I'm probably overdue to drink some water and eat some food anyway. And in the end, all he was guarding was the Patriot's cookbook together with... Ooh, nice, a grenade rifle. Very, very nice indeed. I'll merge that into mine. And with that, I've got fixing things, repair things in your inventory. 30 out of 30, beautiful. So, grenade rifle, that's now up to 52 damage. Uh, but yeah, the ammo is weighing me down a bit. You know, I'm going to get rid of that ant meat as it apparently doesn't seem to actually do anything. Oh yeah, strength minus one to eat ant meat. No, thank you. Uh, so 50 XP for doing that. Like, yeah, some of the little mini achievements you get, some of them give you actual perks. Some of them just give you a little pile of experience. And again, multiple desks and cabinets here locked that don't even have anything inside them. This guy was just a bit of a mad person. I like it. Now, I nipped back to Good Springs to dump some of that loot, particularly that uh, laser rifle I didn't need to use yet quickly, and just so I could wait for it to be morning, because I like it being during the day. You can more clearly see what's going on. And there's one other thing I need to do here in Prim, which I actually picked up a whole bunch of stuff for. Uh, Ruby Nash being full HD is not being kind to your face. Uh, never mind. Uh, who are you? And tell me about a special item you produce. My specialty is a rad scorpion venom casserole. It's more appetizing than it sounds. The venom has a sharp, smoky flavor. And it numbs your mouth so fierce you'll forget you ever had a tongue. It's perfectly safe, long as you don't have sores in your mouth for the venom to find your blood. Because that'll kill you dead. Beautiful. So let's get some of that, because it's actually a very good item. Here, have these. Then hand them over, and I'll get to baking a whole batch of casseroles. Luckily, despite what she says, you don't have to wait. You can see there we did get them straight away. Let's be on our way. So we now have Ruby's casserole times six, food minus 150, a very tiny amount of rads, HP plus one for 30 seconds, and that will get better as I put survival up. A very, very good item. If I think about Johnson Nash, if you join Prim up to the NCR, because there's taxes, he starts giving you a worse deal. However, if Prim Slim is the sheriff, he doesn't. You get the same prices as before. So that's pretty much everything in and around Nipton done in terms of, like, looting. One thing left to do, of course, we need to go and agree to help this guy spread the words of Legion Atrocities. Of course, I'm not attacking these guys. I could probably do it with, like, enough combination of, like, laying mines and armor-piercing rounds, some explosives. Yeah, the grenade rifle especially could probably make it just about doable. 
But there's no point, because you're just basically annoying the Legion and getting assassins on your tail, and you're also losing quests that are free XP. So yeah, completely pointless. Let's agree to do what he says. And off the Legion wanders, so we'll get to that in a second, but first, the last building in Nipton, the Town Hall. As you can hear, there are mines in here, and the Legion dogs that have been left in here do just occasionally step into them, which is bloody convenient, gets a mine out of the way, and also one less dog to deal with. Though sadly, the game is wise to the fact that it wasn't your mine that did it, and thus, you know, you don't get any XP for that sort of thing. Be aware, of course, this place has been properly booby-trapped up, there are, like, mines dotted around and everything, so be a little bit careful. There you are, one mine here. And at the back here, a key. Well worth grabbing that quickly, that is very, very useful. Because this door over here on the right, I can't remember how locked that is. Normally there's a tiny little basement down here, some good stuff in here as well. Unlock gun cabinet down here, gets me my first plasma rifle of the game. Plasma rifles, of course, very, very good indeed. Now, personally, I have a slight preference for laser over plasma purely on ground to the speed of the projectile, but, you know, both of them are very good. Arguably, the plasma is slightly more useful in the early game. Looks like by moving around, I've slightly upset a dog. Yep, there indeed is a Legion Mongrel. And he's dead very, very quickly indeed. More Legion Mongrels coming in. And this thing is just tearing through the Legion Mongrels at this point. Nice. Uh, also, reloading uh, the revolver in VATS is a very good idea, because it basically seems to basically happen for free with VATS defense, and it happens at an accelerated rate. You do still have to, like, it's a slow reload, but you, like, you take way less damage than you would do otherwise. And I actually have one of those ruby casseroles right now. Why not get some healing going on here? I don't believe there's any more dogs. That should now be all of them. If there's any more, I can now easily deal with them. Uh, Lucky will just tear them apart. All right, another floor, more dogs. Hello, you're over there, aren't you? Right, we'll take you out manually. And you're dead. And another one goes down nice and easy. One bullet left. Let's just quickly reload. That was a bad time to reload. Ow. Downside of lucky. Takes a bloody age to reload. On the plus side, I'm getting the reload right for free at the end there. That's good. I just got actually a full clip for free at the end of a VATS round. And just got enough hits off there and that's beautiful. Yes. All right. This thing is a powerful old thing. I love it. Now, uh, be careful here. More mines. A mine very cleverly hidden underneath a corpse. If you go to loot, you will explode. I love how much thought was put into this area. Loads of thought was put into making it, like, properly laid out in such a way as you will basically die the first time you come through. Because it's been properly, like, laid up with traps. If you approach from this angle, you can see it a little bit. Can you see it a bit better? Hang on. Let's just pull you off, actually. We meant to actually pull you off the mine to actually see the mine. There it is. Yeah, it's a very good mine laid right there. And as I was saying, the corpses up on the second floor have a lot more good stuff on them here. Up on the top floor, we're mainly interested in the mayor's office. There is a big book of science in here, which is very, very welcome. And two programmers digest and some mentats. Very, very welcome. Future weapons today. Bobby pins. A pile of lottery tickets that you can sell. They're worth money, but they weigh nothing and an average locked door at the very rear of the room. And 90 XP bonus, because I've been doing some uh, lock picking there, so the game's just quietly rewarding me for doing skill-related stuff. Very nice. And some great stuff in here. Nuka-Cola Victory, always welcome. That, by the way, is not just a decent healing item. In fact, yeah, HP plus 4 for 20 seconds means it's effectively as good a healing item as a stim pack, but also restores action points. It's not quite as good as uh, Quantums in Fallout 4, but it's getting there. This little deceptive pile of money here is actually 20 piles of money, so that's worth good money down the line. The gun cabinet here tends to have some good stuff in it, in fact. Aha! A 10mm submachine gun. Now, if you want to go down the rapid-fire route, that is a good thing to have. I personally do not, but I'd like to take it with me because of its value. You can see there, yeah, 5 weight to uh, almost 1,000 value. That is worth selling, if nothing else. It is also another source of a plasma rifle in here. So combine those two plasma rifles I've picked up, and that plasma rifle is now up to 23 damage a shot, albeit I have very few microfusion cells at the minute. But even then, you can see it's actually not quite as powerful as my upgraded plasma pistol, and uh, yeah, not on DPS or on damage, and weighs a lot more, and has a lot less ammo for it, so not really worth thinking about too much yet. And finally down here, this here is an armor case. What is going to be buried in here? Aha! 
That's what I wanted to see. Leather armor reinforced. Not a guaranteed drop, or maybe it isn't. Jay Sawyer, I've no bloody clue. I, I always talk like I know what I'm talking about. I don't. Not in this one, I don't. Yes, reinforced leather armor. I will gladly take damage threshold 9. Uh, and that means I can get rid of this to get myself down to 127 weight. This looks really cool, by the way. I always like the way that uh, this armor looks. Sorry, you can't really kind of sit very well in this light. But, uh, yeah... That's nice. Like it. Now I'm thinking about it. I've got enough pistols that I could probably do with selling the 10mm pistol and actually keeping the 10mm submachine gun. Because having a rapid fire weapon wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Even though I don't actually have like the most ammo for it. I've got enough ammo for it. Like if I'm going to be using a pistol, plasma and lucky are fine. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually sell the 10mm pistol next time I have an opportunity to. And I'm going to keep uh, the 10mm submachine gun. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn solid. And just because I don't think I'll actually ever get any use out of it whatsoever, I'm going to put my repaired plasma rifle up here. If I ever need a plasma rifle and I'm complaining about it, uh, remind me I've left one up here in this gun cabinet, but I very much doubt I'll ever need this thing because, yeah, one, I prefer the laser rifle, and two, if I ever do need a plasma rifle, there will be a ton of them floating around after I've got to Novak. So really don't need to worry about that just yet at all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to call it apart for now, having shown off what I hope is uh, some interesting stuff that you may not necessarily be aware of, from some unique weapons to the Prim Pass and all the fun stuff hidden around Nipton, just in case you've never explored it that thoroughly. And certainly a few things I wasn't expecting either. So yes, yeah, some changes that good old Josh Sawyer may well have made when he was tinkering with the game. And one more fun thing, I did nip back to a shop just to sell some stuff. And uh, by coincidence, Chet actually happened to have on him the final upgrade for the plasma pistol. So now I can mod that to have the recycler. So replenishes ammunition one out of every four shots I now get back. Which is very, very kind of worth having. Because obviously if you're not carrying as much ammo as you might necessarily like. And you've not got many weapons to fall back on. Yeah, having basically 25% extra ammo at no cost in real terms. Very, very worth having. The recyclers are great things to have in this mode. I'd say with the big iron of Lucky at our hip and reinforced leather armor, we are looking much better than we were last time. Next time we will make our way round to Novak and do some fun stuff round there as well. And after that, well, I actually have a plan for something very special. Something very, very special. And even by the standards of like uh, things that you may not be aware of in New Vegas, I've got something very unique planned to show off. Something that I think only a very tiny, tiny proportion of you will be aware of. So yeah, some really fun, unique stuff coming up over the next part and two, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been Johnson. It's been many a true nerd, and this has been the always glorious Fallout New Vegas with Survival Mode. Thank you very much, and goodbye. You should have got up faster. Well, as long as Anne's alright, I like Anne. She's my favourite character who hasn't said or done anything so far this game. I know this is slow, but I'm not wasting my weapon on you. You're not flipping worth it. But I should not do too much more ramming. Oh, who am I kidding? I'll ram anything I see.